me, Bishop Joshua Luere. Glory be to the name of the living God. I'm so happy to be back and especially to see you vibrant and I, I was listening to the comments. Thank you so much. Um, some of the things that we shared then, we laid the foundation. In the news, they call it the new headlines. So this time we'll be going into details. In Luganda, Gaga So I will uh, kind of recap <laughs> on what we started with. <laughs> Your Excellency, we dealt with the Mitojebikule Vigalimu. So this time we'll be going into what? Into the details. Gaga uh, Numbujuvu, because we are committed to making you better leaders because you are our hope. You are our hope as a nation. You young people, especially Makerere, we want you to take the leadership that you have always uh, taken. And as a Global Leadership Summit, we are really, really committed to this program. We are very grateful to the First Lady for the uh, facilitation of this program. And we are also very grateful for Life Ministry. Some of the team members, are, I'm sure they are around. I greet you all. I have not been able to see you this morning, but thank you so much for all the preparation. Thank you for the guild leadership for your contribution. Allow me this morning to share, to start where we ended. Uh, Bote, when he was here, Dr. Bote said, I'm going to start where I ended. And he said, I have 99 tricks. And when he won the elections in 1980, none of you, I'm sure, you are, was born then, he said, uh, I've only used one of the tricks, so I still have 98. So all of us say, wow. So this morning, I'm starting where I ended. Uh, we ended on something very, very important. As leaders, one of the very, very important issues and ingredients of your leadership is the word that is here. What? Integrity. integrity. And I want to share something about integrity because that's what makes you a credible leader. A credible leader, the key issue, the greatest ingredient is integrity. And all our sharing and in different aspects of character, practices, really hang on that very, very important aspect of our life, integrity. Um, allow me, since I'm a bishop, I, I'm sure you're not shocked every time I use scripture. Because if we quote people, people come and go. Uh, people in this world, politicians, uh, athletes or what, they come and go. But we know that scriptures are timeless principles that don't change with time. Are you, do you agree with me? So that's why I quote scripture because they will be the same yesterday, today, and what? Forever. So uh, allow me to quote that. In the Muslim faith, I'm sure you have similar scriptures, but I haven't done my homework to understand what what you know what 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 they are, but I'm sure you'll find the equivalent uh, 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 truth laid out in in the scriptures. So I'll use the Bible instead, because that's where I'm more acquainted, uh, and and so it also helps you because scripture has life in it. When you quote scripture, it has power to have life. Jesus said one day, the words that I speak to you are spirit and life. So when you quote Mandela, you quote uh, Clinton, you quote those people have said some words and maybe true or maybe facts. But when you quote scripture and you speak it, it has life in it. And, and, and the, life, the word that when, when you hear the scripture, you become. What you meditate on in the scriptures, you become. When you meditate on the love of God, you start to love. When you meditate on integrity and quote scripture, integrity starts to work in you because scripture is life. Is that clear? Okay, I want to ask all of us to read these scriptures because they are, they are good. Uh, uh, can we read them out loud? And David shepherded them with integrity of heart, with skillfulness of hands. Okay, he laid them. Okay. Job's wife said to him, are you still holding on to your integrity? My, may integrity and uprightness protect me. Now, notice in some of these 
Uh, first of all, David, we all know, I'm sure you have heard of David in the Quran, he's called Dawood. Dawood? Da eh? Dawood? Dawood? He's called what? Dawood. Eh? You have Prophet Dawood. So it's known both in the Bible and in Quran. He was one of the great leaders of time. And uh, the Bible talks about him. It says, David shepherded them with integrity of heart and skillfulness of hands. The last time I was with you, I talked about the four H's. Let me see anyone who can remember the four H that we talked about. Anybody? You, can you remember the four H? I talked about during the Mitwejebi Yes? The head, mm -hmm. the hands, mm. the heart, mm. and uh, God. Mm. Let me see where else can remember the four H. Yeah? Thank you, you tried. Just one H left. One H left. One H left. All our education has to have those four H. All the information you get, your ability, your leadership has to have those four. Yes. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you very, very much. Now, this will teach others to quickly respond. This is, <laughs> this is yours. Uh, thank you very much. This is to thank you for remembering. So make sure you are attentive so that you can. I have quite a bit here. Yeah? Uh -huh, thank you very much. Uh -huh. Can you clap for her, please? <laughs> the head has to do with the academic knowledge. The heart deals with character. The hands deals with skills, competence, capacity. But the house is my community consciousness, social responsibility I have towards others. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So, will you remember those four? The first one is, what is it about? Your academic, what you are doing in school now, in college, in, in, in university, you are accumulating facts. That is knowledge. But when you apply that knowledge, it becomes wisdom. Wisdom is of the heart. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It brings you character. Character is the second age, heart. The third is, Hands. Hands have to do with skills. Your ability to apply the knowledge here, you have skills. And, but then you must have uh, that uh, 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 social responsibility to other people. So now David led and it emphasizes the age, the, the, the heart and the what? The hands. He, that's how he led the people. He, he led them with the integrity of heart and the skillfulness of hands. He was a great administrator. He had a lot of skill. And so the Bible especially brings the heart first. Of course, he was also, he also had the knowledge. He did a lot of meditation in the word. He wrote so many of the Psalms, but he also had the love for his people. So he has the other two H, but the two H's here brought out very clearly. Job's wife, Job was a man who suffered for nine months and lost everything. And his wife was saying, are you still holding on to your integrity? So we are told by his wife that Job was a man of what? Integrity. Job, one time God was speaking to Ezekiel and said, if I come to destroy a city and there is a Noah, and there is a Job, and there is a, 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 a Daniel. So Job was one of those who was singled out as one of the very righteous men, men of integrity. Then it we see in Psalms, it says, may integrity and uprightness protect you. So as a leader, integrity protects you. These days, people believe so much in uh, guards, and I'm not against guards, you know, we walk and have so many people, Bakanyama, going ahead of you. Out. For me, my faith is not so much in those. I believe if you are a man of what? Man of what? Integrity, truth, truth, Integrity will do what? Will protect you. But when you are in positions of leadership, sometimes it is true that other people may just want to come and attack you. So certainly in that case, you'd need people, you'd need bodyguards, you'd need what? But the integrity is a great protection for you. But that protection is not just physical, but it's also moral. 
if you are a man of integrity, people can trust you with their money, they can trust you with resources, they can trust you with responsibility, leadership, and so on. So because it will protect you from being corrupted. So what you write here, the protection is from corruption. Because when you are entrusted with power, power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. So, but when you have integrity, you will not be corrupted with power. Power are positions of authority. Knowledge is a position of power. Uh, knowledge corrupts people. When they become so wise, they become proud. Power, great positions of leadership and influence can corrupt people. Money corrupts people. When you are in those positions and the ladies come, they are ready to do anything you want. At your, I mean men or women. If you are a man, it will be women. If to a, mom, a woman, it will be what? Men. But when you have integrity, you'll be able to stand those tests. So what will protect you most, where you should put your greatest trust, is not so much of these other outward things. It is the inward heart of integrity. So your first protection is not the kanyama, is not the money, is not the uh, who you know. Somebody called it gambanogu. All those things are not very... You know, they, they, are, they pass away with time. But when your heart is a heart of integrity, you have a strong what? Protection. Do you agree with me? That's your greatest protection. So you build your integrity in God. Look at uh, two, uh, three other scriptures. In my integrity, uh, uh, sorry, in, let's read it together. In my integrity, you uphold me and set me in your presence forever. So God upholds us because of integrity, and he draws us near to himself, to his heart, then we can understand his heart. That is very good. Then the next one, read together. I know, my God, that you test the heart and are pleased with integrity. God is always testing our hearts and is always very pleased with what? With integrity in our heart. When you want God to be pleased with you, walk, live by integrity. The man of integrity walks securely, but he who takes crooked paths will be found. Suppose you are in an organization and you are the accountant. Every time you see somebody with a tie and a file, you think is a, a, an auditor coming and you say, oh, he's not an auditor. <laughs> now, when you walk with integrity and you have nothing to hide, you know, you're not worried about... You, you see people in government, some of them, you know, who are crooked, they are always like that. They are scared of anybody holding a fire, anybody coming with... That, that kind of life you live, especially when you are living a crooked life, you are always scared of being found out because you know you have a lot of skeletons to hide and bones that you have to cover. But when you are a man of integrity, you walk with confidence. Greg Rochelle talked about confidence. Confidence is not something yet you try to say, now I'm confident, now I'm, no, no, no. Once you walk with integrity, you'll be so confident. You have nothing to hide. You don't even think about it. You are confident by nature because you have nothing to hide. You, you are really confident because you are truthful, you are honest when you are speaking. That confidence is automatic when you walk with what? Integrity. Do you want to walk with integrity so that you become more confident, more bold, the other scripture says, the righteous are as bold as a lion. Your boldness comes from your inside. Your inside, you are confident, you are sure. You have nothing to hide, you are not hiding anything. Look at three other, and then we'll find. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Duplicity means here in the light, you are something else. In the dark, you are something else. That is duplicity. You have two lives. The life alone in private is different from the life in the public. God is more interested in your life in the private. Integrity of the upright guides them. When you are a man of integrity, you are guided. The, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. Righteousness guards the man of integrity. But wickedness overthrows the sinner. In your leadership position... You are guarded, you are protected, you have nothing to fear, there will be no uh, uh, vote of no confidence, or those kind of things, because you walk uprightly. Now, in uh, Mark 12, 14, they came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we know you are a man of what? 
integrity. So Jesus and many other religious leaders walked with integrity. Now, let's get in. Are you, are you able to read from the back? Are these words legible? Uh, can you see them? Are they big enough? Thank you. Thank you. Now, living with integrity is living by your conscience. I mentioned something about conscience, and I'm going to elaborate a little bit more about it. I'm sure you hear a lot about it among the politicians. Respect your conscience. Have you heard of that? Let's live by our conscience. Now, today I'm going to elaborate a little bit on the conscience. Living with integrity is living by your conscience. Violating your conscience continually weakens its voice. Now, what is conscience? I'm going to define it a little bit more. But let me just go a little bit by about integrity, and then I'll spend a little bit more time on the conscience. And I'm putting all this here. Uh, the conscience, uh, let, let me leave this uh, slide because I think it is, it is important. But uh, let me, in general, talk about what we call, about what we call conscience. It is a voice of God in your heart. It's a part that every single human being has. Animals don't have it. God gave human beings something different from all other creation. He said, let's make man in our image. That image is the spirit. God is a spirit. We are spirits. So in our spirit, there is a component that is called conscience. And I'm going to show it to you shortly. So it is through that voice, the, the, sorry, through that conscience, that you hear the voice when you're going to do something wrong, and that voice tells you, don't do it, it's wrong. That is somebody's wife. That is somebody's money. That is somebody's pain. That is somebody's what? Eh? Anything wrong that you're going to do, it is your conscience. That quickly pricks you. Eh? Have you heard that voice constantly? Do you hear that voice every time you're going to do something wrong? I can't hear you people. Do you normally hear that voice? People at the back, do you hear that voice when you're about to do something wrong? Who is speaking? Your conscience. It is your conscience that is saying, don't do it. That is wrong. That part of us, in us, is of God. It is given to everybody, irrespective of religion. This is not about Sikh religion, Christian religion, Muslim, Hindu, Buddha. No, it is by every human being. Not in animals, it is in human beings. Animals don't have a spirit. Animals, when you hit a dog, it's dead, it's finished. Human beings don't end like dogs. They are... Uh, 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 they have a part in them which is called the spirit, and I'm going to show it to you. So every time you refuse to take a bribe because your conscience tells you eh, that what you're doing is wrong and you obey it. You don't steal because your inner voice tells you it is wrong. Employees submit to their bosses and file monthly reports on time because they obey the voice of their what? You observe the speed limit and the traffic lights, not for fear of necessarily being arrested, but because your conscience says, let me do the right thing. Now, I have a problem myself struggling with that. Uh, you know, so speed limit is, is not easy because you plan from here to there, I'll take one hour, and then along the way you find a lot of traffic, what? Jams. And every time you find a, a, a free space, you want to catch up with what you have wasted the time we have wasted in the what? In the traffic jam. So sometimes it's really hard to keep the speed limit. Anybody who keeps the speed limit these days, it's not very easy. <laughs> I struggle with it myself. And that's where my conscience, I think, pricks me most, okay? You declare and pay the right taxes when under declaring would be convenient and you, uh, would make economic sense for you personally and your business. You are punctual at work. You keep time because it is right. So whenever you decide I'm going to do the right thing, when there is another convenient thing. You remember when we were talking in Esera, we said you can live either by conviction or by convenience. So it is the, the conviction comes from the conscience. It is the conviction of the conscience that protects you. You say, I'm going to live by conviction. When you say that, you are saying I'm going to live by my conscience. When you don't live by your conviction and you live by your by convenience, then you'll be constantly, constantly violating your conscience. 
And so that is the difference. So if you choose to live by conviction, then your conscience must be sharpened because that's where the conviction comes from. Uh, now, what is integrity? Adherence to moral and ethical principles, soundness of moral character and honesty. So if you live by integrity, you are living by your conscience. You adhere to moral and ethical principles. Adhere to moral. Moral principles just mean the right and wrong. Well, ethical principles, for example, at your place of work, there are ethics, ethics of work in the office, in the organization where you are going. Many of you are going into leadership uh, 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 after here, after university, you are going to be employed. There are certain ethics in every field. If you're a lawyer, there are uh, ethics that you follow as a lawyer. Younger lawyer, you respect older lawyers. You respect the judge. Those are ethics in court. Any lawyers here? Any lawyers? What? No, I mean aspiring to, to be. <laughs> okay, aspiring to be lawyers here? Okay. Th those are ethics in the legal profession. Then there are other ethics in the health. If you are a doctor aspiring to become a doctor, there are ethics there. The, you take the Hippocratic oath, and then there are ethics. You keep the secrets of, the, of, your, of, 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 of your patient. That, that is the, that is, that's talked about ethics. Those are ethics. If you are a minister of the gospel like I am, you, you, there are certain religious, ethical values. You, you, you treat yourself with dignity, with honesty, and that. Those are ethics. But then there are moral. The moral are those the right and wrong thing to do in general, where you don't steal, you don't lie, you don't uh, commit uh, fornication, and, that, and so on. So the, both are very, very important. So living with integrity, you choose that I'm going to adhere to the moral and the ethical principles of soundness of moral character and honesty. Now, integrity refers to wholeness of character demonstrated by consistency between thoughts, words, and action. What you think is what you say, and what you say is what you do. So you are one and the same. And the word in, uh, integrity actually comes from the word integer. Integer means one. So you are one. You are one in thought, one in speech, one in what? Action. You are the same person. You are not thinking one thing and then saying another thing. Now in politics, there is so much of that. And all of you aspiring to be uh, leaders and politics will constantly put you on pressure. Oh, hey, now, I'm now that is not easy because now you are going to speak what people want even when that is not what? Right. Is that true? Is that a challenge or is it not? I want to hear you give leaders. Is it a challenge or not? It's a big challenge because many times you, are, you may know that not actually this is not right. But that's what most people want. Hmm? So what do you do? What do you do? You say what people want. Now that, then you are the challenge, that's where the challenge is. When you live with integrity, you choose to say the right what? What you think is what you say and what you, you do. So you are the same, integrity. It is the ability to make and keep commitments to yourself and to walk your talk, and to talk your walk. Integrity is the value you place on yourself based on those principles. Every time you walk with integrity, your value goes up. Thank God. Every time you walk with integrity, your value goes up. Suppose an organization is looking for somebody of integrity, and there's not any to be found. Now they've they will be ready to pay you any amount because they know you are the one who can handle these many billions that are coming in. This big organization where you get billions of dollars, let's get this person who is paid so much in this company, but let's get him because he's the one who can handle this. You see, your value goes up. People who talk to you, people who want to hire you, your value goes up. The more you uh, 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 give in to convenience, you lower your values. You, you don't realize it at the time, but you're lowering your value. It is uh, 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 Lona, uh, Lona Magara the other time was sharing about her life. Do you remember how she shared her life? 
and how she put her value up by refusing all these men who are coming with the good age and all that. Yeah? You remember that? Now, when you do that, people, young men, these people who are always out to defeat any young who is coming in, they say, ha, oh, Tom Sobola. That one. <laughs> now, in, in offices, in government, they say, ha, that magistrate, oh, you are turning a million ton. Oh, you're now, then they, they start to, ah, oh, you know, no, 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 Traffic. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of thing. <laughs> Every time you live like that, you are so easy and cheap that people start to talk about it. Ah, that one. All you need is a few uh, 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 notes before her, and you'll see her saliv salivate. Because yeah? uh, as long as you move, uh, uh, she'll be done. Hmm? This one, the value is big. I thought he would get it, but his value was a little bit high. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah? so that, that is the kind of thing about value. Now look at the, this list. Look at this list. Integrity requires personal discipline. Now the word discipline is where we get the word disciple. Okay? Discipline and disciple have the same word, root. So discipline derives from the word disciple. So you are discipled by a philosophy. You live by that philosophy. You are discipled by a set of principles, a set of values, some overriding purpose. You are discipled by overarching vision or goal in life. Or you are following a person like, for example, Jesus represents all my values in life. That's why I follow him and I'm a disciple of Jesus. If, if you have, for example, a purpose, Chipro teach. Um, give me this other name, Chiproti, Chi, chi yeah? Cheptege, another Chi, Chipolim. Uh -huh. Now, when you talk about those, uh, those young men, eh, they, are, uh, they are gold medalists. If you are to go back in their life about 25 years earlier or 20 years early, you will find that they, they have lived differently from all other young people. What do you think? How different have they been living? While others are sleeping, they are what? Whether it's raining, whether it is drizzling, many of us are putting our blankets back. For them, they are jumping out of bed. Out of conviction, they throw the convenience of the bed, go out into the cold and do the drills. So when you see them one day getting a gold medal, they are not getting it that day. That's how they have been for the last 20 plus years. You understand that? Because they decided to disciple their life, to discipline their life, towards a vision that they always have had in life. They decided one day I'll be a gold medalist. By the time they are 30 or 35 and they get it, it hasn't come that day. It has been a lifetime of commitment to a discipline. You young people, young leaders, I pray that you get such commitment and vision. That you have something over aging that eats you up and you keep before you you keep it before your eyes you are continually continually looking forward to that day when you become that you need to have that kind of vision and the values your values your character is always formed by that kind of vision if the vision is very very high the demands will be very very high the demands in terms of what you eat who you talk with the relationship you have so if you got Look, with Kipro teach, they will not eat the, 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 the food others eat, junk food. We call it junk food. <laughs> Chips and what? Chicken. Uh, or any other junk food. They said, no, I can't eat that because I have a vision. I want to become a gold medalist. You see that? They always have a goal. I will not do that. No, I cannot oversleep. I can't go beyond these hours. Or I can't eat at, at, at 10, 10 p.m. You know what that does? When you eat at 10 p.m., most of the food when your body has gone to rest and the food remains so it keeps your tummy like this. Eh? <laughs> so that for them, they say, I, I, I can't afford that, you know. Because they are going to keep, it is the discipline they have decided to put on themselves. Nobody is demanding you are. Remember, public leadership comes from private leadership. Private leadership flows from discipline. Discipline is you choosing to disciple your life after a certain lifestyle. 
the friends you have, the food you eat, the books you read, the, the way you spend your time, it, it has taken over all your life. And that is what makes you a great leader. It raises the value of your leadership because the, you've really, really decided and you've chosen and you keep it to yourself. You, are not, you don't have anybody telling you, asking you, you are constantly checking on yourself. So I'm going to be a man who keeps time. I always keep time. And you decide against all odds, for me, I'll keep time. If others don't, for me, I'll keep what? You can choose in this country to choose and say, for me, I'll always keep time. And I'm going to make it. I have, for example, I personally have decided to do that. I decide to keep time, except when it's beyond my power. But people can come to me and say, oh, our president, huh? that one, if he promises he's coming at nine, be sure he'll be there. If you don't see him at nine, he's either had an accident or he has died. So they know in keeping time, <laughs> he's so good. <laughs> time, ah, that is his value. Now, that is a, a, a very, very important part for you as a leader. Especially for you, you have opportunity now at the formative stages of your leadership. This is where these values are set. You don't come along, along the way up when you are 40, 50. That is too late already. You've lost already opportunities. You start now. When do we start? Now. You're going to start now. Those values, those principles. Spend more time reading about character issues than even leadership. Because at the end of the day, that is the real matter. The others, people can put them up by just reading and acting them out. But for you, you leave them. When you leave, character is more important in leadership than uh, oratory, uh, your ability to speak. Those are wonderful, but they are short-lived. Short-lived. The ones that transcend time are the issues of character of the heart. Okay?